You know, one of the soldiers was saying that. Are we dreaming? Go ahead. There were even officials in charge of sweeping. Recall one of the all of observers. In fact, at least 1,000 public workers were employed to maintain the city streets and to keep them clean and watered. And while European cities then and for centuries thereafter took their drinking water from the uh, feeded and polluted rivers nearby. That's Esau. Esau loved drinking polluted water. That's why he doing what that's why he's doing what he's doing today. Putting fluoride and everything else in that water. And the reason why it was polluted over there in Europe, that's what we were, you know. Southern the Southern Kingdom. That's what we were. And the reason why I was like that, because you had Edomites amongst us. You had Edomites amongst us. They were nasty as hell. We was trying to keep it up. That's why it was political for us to push them, push them up in the fucking mountains, man. Excuse my French, but hey, we had to do what we had to do, man. Everything was nasty. And, that, and the same thing you see today when them white folks, Edom Esau, came over to this side, what he do? Pollute everything. And that's what you see today, man. They the same, they the same way, man. They don't change, but the thing about it is, the masses of our people can't see it because they blind, man. Okay. And they don't understand history, true history. Chino Chileans drinking water came from springs deep within the mainland and was piped into the city by a huge adequate system that amazed Cortez and his men, just as they astonished also by the personal cleanness and hygiene of the colorful dress of populace and by the extravagant to the Spanish use of soaps, deodorants, and breath sweeteners. Yeah, they had all that. The natives had all that. You know? Uh, let me see. So they was amazed. Uh, let me see here. We're going to read this about uh, the Incas, which is Asher, okay? People in Brazil and Peru, uh, like that, people like that, which are the tribe of uh, Asher. We're going to read this on page 43, and then we're going we're gonna to read one more after this, and then we're going to close out. Right. It says, John Hemming put it, the Incas were too confident of the security of their empire and the honesty of its citizens to hide their dead rulers possessions. All the Inca palaces were different, made of various types of marble, rare wood, and precious metal, but each had at least one common characteristic. Enormous, ha enormous halls and ballrooms capable of holding up to 4,000 people for banquets and dances when the weather prevented such festivals from being held outdoors. One such hall which served on rainy days as a plaza for Inca festivals and dances was so large, wrote uh, Garci Garcilastio de la Vega. The uh, 60 horsemen could barely easily play cannons inside it. Play cannons inside it. Okay. Yeah, so that was showing you that the Inca's empire was beautiful. You know? And I got a, uh, and then we got this page and uh, God. I really want to start there, but we gonna we gonna start there and go to the mother page. Oh, you got something? Okay. This is uh First Kings ten and twenty one, and it says, and all Solomon's drinking vessels were of gold, and all the vessels of the house of the forest of Laban were pure gold, none of silver. It was nothing accounted in the days of Solomon, for the king had at sea a navy of Tharshish, which the navy of Hiram. Once in three years came the navy of Tharshish, bringing gold, silver, ivory, and apes and peacocks. So King Solomon exceeded all the kings of the earth for riches and wisdom. Yeah, when you look up that uh, when you look up that word uh, peacock, I think it means uh, uh, turkeys. Okay. When you look it up, turkeys and things of that nature. So they was coming to this land. They was coming to this land. Solomon and uh, Hiram, which Hiram was a Canaanite, a Hamite, uh, of the Phoenicians, and they was coming to this land uh, to get uh, 
things to build up uh, Solomon's Temple. That good smelling wood. Okay, that's where you get the uh, the Olmecs at. Those are the Canaanites. And them Olmecs were set up for uh, for navigational purposes. Like the sea, like the ships could see uh, the landmarks from the sea. So those were navigational uh, uh, marks. That's what those, uh, the Olmecs were set up for. Uh, now this, this on page, this in the same book, on page 13, the, the, uh, the American the Holocaust. Holocaust. Same book. It says, the uh, Regis, Regis Professor of Modern History of, at Oxford University, who wrote at the start of his book, The Rise of the Christian Europe, of the uh, unrewarding uh, gracious of barbarous tribes in, picture, in picturesque but irrelevant corners of the globe who are nothing less than people without history. Yeah, so that's what they, that's part of Esau uh, uh, mind control and flood and uh, a lie that he pushed out there saying that uh, natives over here were barbarians. You see, and they put that in a lot of their book. They don't give you the true history because they set it up like that. So they uh, uh, portray the people as evil and wicked and uncivilized so they can be destroyed. Same thing they do today. That's why when Jake do something out of character, Esau hurry up and highlight that. That's why I hurry up and highlight it so the people, when, when they do take down a Jake that ain't doing nothing, the people associate that Jake with the other Jakes and say, well, oh yeah, they need to be destroyed. They all beats. You see, they'll put it in the movie. And a lot of them movies uh, influence the masses of the people. And they take that hook, line, and sinker. Mind control, MK Ultra, man. Okay. Oh, yeah. It says, perhaps in the future, there will be some African history to teach. He conceded. But at present, there is none. Yeah, just like they talking about us. They'll say we come from Africa. But our motherland is in Jerusalem. And we fled into Africa in 70 AD during the time of the Roman persecution. You see? And they're trying to say we ain't got no history. But the thing about it is, that's the way the white man demonized the Negro in this country. Same way they demonized the, uh, the natives in this country. And the Latin tribes and the Hispanic tribes. Go ahead. There is only the history of Europeans in Africa. See, that's that, that's that uh, Edomite supremacy. Go ahead. It says the rest is largely darkness, like the history of the pre-European, pre-Columbian America. And darkness is not a subject for history. Yeah, so they don't talk about it. Go ahead. The Eurocentric racial con contempt for the indigenous people of North and South America, as well as Africa, that is reflected in scholarly writings scholarly writings of this sort is now to complete the second nature to the most Americans that it is passed into popular lore and common knowledge of every schoolboy knows variety. Yeah, so the true history, the true history and the lie that the so-called white man set up is passed to the generation of these children that go to these schools and they keep passing it, keep passing it down. So when we out here teaching through the spirit of the Heavenly Father and we going to the real history, they look at us like we like we just crazy out of our mind. But you've been indoctrinated in the school system by the so-called white man with us all lies. Go ahead. About the true history and the indigenous people of this land. It says no and intent. And the Negro, Latinos, and the, all of them. Go ahead. It says no intent to distort the truth in any longer necessary. All that is required once the model is established is the reconciliation of uh, rote, rote, uh, rote learning as it passes from one uncritical generation to the next. See that? So the thing that you learn in them schools ain't the true history. That's called uh, Edomite supremacy. And what they take, teach you is lies and you take it hook, line, and singer and tell your children the same thing. And you all screwed up in the brain because you don't know real history. And then you're subject unto the so-called white man because you don't know true history. Go ahead. Gone. And it says, as Masru points out, which regard the uh, cartographic distortions that un unformally minimize Africa as a physical presence in the world, 
The historical distortions. It should be Israelites. Okay. Systematically reduced in demographic and cultural and moral significance. The native people of the Americas are part of very a very old and enduring political design. Woo! Go ahead. They constitute what the historians of South Africa, Leonard Thompson, called a political mythology. Yeah, it's, uh, it's all political, man. That's the reason why they do it. It's all political. To keep gov being governed over you, man. Because once you learn that truth, man, you want to separate yourself from this, this way of life, man. You want to separate yourself, and that he don't want you to do, so-called white man. He wants you to be together with him so you can be destroyed. And then he'll tell you, well, why are you talking about hate and why are you talking about division? You're dividing the people every day because you ain't telling them who they are according to the scriptures. <laughs> it says, in Thompson's words, a political myth is a tale told about the past to legitimize and discredit a regime, whereas a political mythology is a cluster of such myths that reinforce one another to jointly const const constitute the historical element of an ideology of the regime or its rivals. The occasion for these native culture and cultures, small sub subsequently population estimates regarding the pre-conquest size of the indigenous population nicely served to smother uh, retroactive moral scruples and otherwise might uh, surface writings a writings a few years after Jennings Robert F. Burkhofer made much the same point regarding manufactured historical views of native barbarism the image of the savage he stated flatly serves the rationalized European conquest Writings about America, America's political mythology regarding the history of the Western Hemisphere indigenous people, falsified histories. Woo, falsified history. So the way they say they barbarians and they wicked and evil, all that history was falsified. It was all political, man. All written, political. Written by the conquerors of the colonial and pre-colonial societies throughout the world. The United States, Israel, South Africa, Australia. What? Slow down. Who, the United who? States. United States, Israel, Israel, South Africa, South Africa, and Australia, and Australia, um, all are, are falsifying history. Among uh, them, commonly com commits with what said referred to as blotting out the knowledge of the indigenous people. So, the indigenous people and their heritage are not being taught who they are according to the Bible. So, hey man, that's plain. With all that. Been brought out through the spirit. Lord willing, you brothers was edified through the spirit. I know we ain't bring out a lot of scriptures, but the scriptures that we did bring out through the spirit, I hope it was edifying. I hope this history was edifying to you brothers. I hope, you know, it was all edifying. So with that, all praises to Yahweh, Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shah, and double honors to the elders of GMS, the apostles who rule well, and salute you brothers in the strength of Yahweh Ba Hashem, Yahweh Shah, and keep teaching this truth and sincerity and search the scriptures. And we almost out of here, Lord willing, he destroyed this place soon. Shalom. Shalom. Death to America. Death to America. Kwam Yashallah.